never heard, and I'm being honest, I'd never heard of perimenopause. I hadn't, Kelly, no. Maybe it was a year ago I heard something like that. So what is perimenopause? I've done my research now. So maybe there's people listening that were like me a year ago. So the perimenopause can usually start around about the 40s. It can be earlier, but generally you'll start to maybe see some differences in your 40s. Your weight gain might, your energy levels might drop. You might start getting hot flushes or night sweats. Perimenopause is the stage where you will actually start to experience the symptoms but nobody knows about that. They always think menopause is in your 50s, but actually it can be anywhere from four to 10 years that you're actually in perimenopause. Hi Shannon, it's great to have you on this show today. How are you doing? Hi Kelly, thank you. I'm doing great and thanks for having me. You're most welcome. I've really been looking forward to this particular podcast for a number of reasons because I've never really had the opportunity to ask an expert in what you are the questions that I have. So without (laughs) being too cryptic, why don't you give everyone who's watching and listening a little bit of a backstory as to who you are and what it is that you actually do? Okay. Uh, I'm Sharon James and I'm a women's health and wellness coach, but I specialize in menopause. And the sort of backstory for me is that when I was 45, I started, my body started changing. I was an, I'm an athlete and my diet's pretty good. Nothing sort of changed in my lifestyle, but my body was changing. So I really needed to sort of get a handle on it. And I realized quite quickly I was going into perimenopause. Um, So that was, I'm 52 now, so I'm still in perimenopause at the moment. So I, I needed some research for myself, which then I then sort of transitioned into my clients because as I got to work, working with women within that age group, I realized that just looking at general weight, you know, exercise and, and nutrition wasn't enough. We needed to know more about the body. Yeah. So I threw myself into loads of courses, um, um, bolt-ons to what I already do, just to be able to help women go through this journey because it is, it is a struggle for most women as I found out. (laughs) (laughs) And I think it's something, I don't know whether it's an age thing now, I'm in my forties, people are talking about it, or I'm noticing it more, or is it something just more people are a bit more comfortable about talking about? I think there's a couple of things there. I think first of all, um, generally when we get to this age, we start to think about it, but we don't actually know, a lot of women don't actually know what it is we're gonna get or go through. And second of all, I think the, the industry the, or the market has picked up in terms of the awareness that we need as women because you know we're we're um, staying in our jobs longer we're living longer you know back in our mum's generation for example there was nothing uh, you know about menopause on the you know there wasn't even internet there was nothing so I think the awareness is changing for women because of the challenges that women are facing when they're going through this I think it's highlighted more now because studies are now being done on us for us rather than studies done on men that don't have nothing to do with us you know so there's a lot more research and information coming out that we can actually help ourselves with the symptoms when we get to menopause stage so yeah definitely well i was thinking if we can make this a little bit of a menopause perimenopause sort of master class in a sense of questions let's start with the basics um so I had never heard, and I'm being dead honest, I'd never heard of perimenopause. I hadn't, Kelly, no. Like, maybe maybe it was a year ago I heard, or, or something like that. It, it's So what is perimenopause? I've done my research now, so I'm a bit more, but maybe there's people listening that are like, were like me a year ago. Yeah, well, that's the first thing sort of women say to me when I say, you know, they go, oh, I'm not in menopause. And I'm go like, well, how old are you? And they go maybe 40, 41. And I'm like, well, you probably in perimenopause and and so you've got three stages of menopause you've got perimenopause menopause and postmenopause so the perimenopause can usually start around about the 40s it can be earlier but we'll talk about that a little bit later but generally you'll start to maybe see some differences in your 40s um, you know, your periods might change from an odd day or two to a week to a month and, the, you know, they might fluctuate. Your weight gain might, your energy levels might drop. So you might start getting hot flushes um, or night sweats and stuff like that. So perimenopause is the stage where you will actually start to uh, experience the symptoms, but nobody knows about that, you know. So they always think menopause is 
in your 50s, but actually there's a 10 year, it can be anywhere from four to 10 years that you're actually in perimenopause. I've been in it now for eight years still. So that's, that's perimenopause, when your body starts to shift, your estrogen and your progesterone levels and your testosterone levels start to fluctuate. Then you'll enter into menopause, which is actually only for a year. And the, the, the year is when you, very have, you have your very last menopause uh, period, sorry, and you go a whole year without having any periods, a whole year. Even if you go six months and have one, you've got to start again the whole year. Okay. So once you've completed that one year cycle, you are officially into menopause then? Then you're into post. Ah, okay. Yeah. Menopause is only for 12 months. 12 months, oh that's goodness. it. I thought this was like this whole thing that you were in it for 10 years or five years or something. Well, if, if you look at it, really, you are. Uh, I mean, as soon as you start going into sort of post um, sort of menopause, then that year, then you're in post menopause for the rest of your life until you die, basically. Ah. But the symptoms and stuff can change um, depending on how, you know, I think you're going to ask me how you sort of deal with the symptoms and stuff, but the, the severity of how you go through this, we're very different. You and I could have very, very different symptoms, mm -hmm. you know, so that, that's the key factor. It's understanding you as a female, what's happening in your body rather than what the other, you know, your friends might have gone through because it can be completely different. Um, so let's go back to the perimenopause and, and sort of talk through the steps there though. Can I go to the clinic and they go, yep, you're in perimenopause. Like, how do you know? Because I think, oh, right, okay, I've got th those night sweats. Like, I just thought that was part and parcel of living in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God we've got air conditioning because I think we would actually experience it even more. No, well, absolutely. So, you know, is, is there somewhere you can go and find out if you're in perimenopause? Generally, um, generally not. If you're having, the, they could do blood tests on you, but because you're still having your periods, your your hormone levels will fluctuate even throughout the month that you're having your periods. So they would, <laughs> they would generally go on your symptoms. So if you're having hot flushes, night sweats, mood swings, uh, you know, all all that kind of good stuff, then they will probably put you into that category. But you've got to go with these symptoms to the doctor. They they would, you know, if you're at a certain age, they might not even consider you going into perimenopause. It depends how clued up your doctor is or your GP, because some of them just, you know, end up putting you on all sorts of different other medication rather than treating you for perimenopause and, and maybe HRT at that point, or they might give you some other holistic solution. So a blood test generally, but if you're over the age of 45, they won't do a blood test. They'll, they'll go on your, they will go on your symptoms and then they'll either give you HRT or alternative medicine if you want to use it. Okay, okay. So one of the things that I've um, done just recently, and maybe there's other suggestions out there, is I had a little look online because I, you know, tracked my period and everything, but a lot of them were, you know, for having a baby. And then mm. I did some research and there's actually ones for menopause. And I found this one which looks really easy to use, trying it for a couple of months called Balance. Have you yes. heard of that one? Yeah, so Louise Newson in the UK, I've done, I've actually done her course. Ah. Um, so Balance is really good. It gives you loads of information about, you know, up to date information. It is based UK statistics, but it, it's, you know, it's, for, for us, it gives us lots of information of how, what your symptoms might be, how you should approach it. You know, the, she is very much towards HRT, which I get, you know, a lot of women do want that, but they're, you know, from being a well-being coach as well, you can't just take HRT and expect your life to go on being rosy. You know, you've got to look at your diet, your nutrition, your sleep, your exercise, it all comes into play. So HRT, when you go on Louise Newson's site, she'll give you all the information that you need. It's it's really really good. I do recommend that for you for your uh, listeners. Yeah, and I, well, the app was like you could track things like you know just how you were feeling, moods, um, you know, just different things. It was and it was a nicely done app. So I'm yeah. going to keep playing with that. So I thought it was quite interesting. So we've got this perimenopause, which now I realise we can be in for a for quite a few years. The symptoms yeah. we've spoken about in terms of the the night sweats or the the weight gain or the sort of the lack of energy um anything else that people what is headache sort of one of the sort of symptoms yeah headaches can come in mood swings irrational mood swings um hair loss also can be part of it 
itchy skin, vaginal dryness, you name it, Kelly, we get it. <laughs> we get it all. <laughs> There's, there's, over, there's over 50 symptoms that we could experience. Like I said, every woman's different. So, you know, and, and the thing is, it's, it's like there are all these symptoms out there, but I, I'm a really true believer of like looking after yourself, making sure you go to the gym, eat healthy. And a lot of these symptoms sort of dissipate with, you know, without, you know, having to go down a lot of medication route to, to solve it. They are lifestyle choices that you can make to help them. You might still get them, but the severity of it might change. Um, but doing that symptom checker, I always give my client a symptom checker and a diary always to, to fill in so that you are aware of what's going on. And then when you do go to a GP, you can say, this is what's happening to me. This is what's happening. Really useful. Um, just on that thought there about, um, you know, symptoms and, and what to do next. I have a question on it there. It's just gone out of my mind. OK, so I'll come back to it. If I remember, I'll come back to it. So we've got... Um, the, the perimenopause, and that was the other thing that I found out just recently was that one year period, mm -hmm. that you, like without that one year where you didn't have a period, then that's in the next phase. You know, it, yeah. It, yeah. The, the, I can't remember what it was, the Davina book. I, I downloaded oh. her book, um, and I'll be dead honest, it absolutely frightened me. Yeah. Yeah, it can, it can do. And I, I did a talk with uh, BBG yesterday. And I just said to the women in the audience, I said, look, if you read everything about menopause, you're going to be frightened to death about it. And I think yeah, because we I had really no is. knowledge of it yeah, before, but if you break it down and look at your lifestyle and I'll go back to, you know, your health and well-being, then it, it, it doesn't necessarily fear. You don't have to be fearful of it. It's just you have to get take control of it. You really do have to take control of it. So what are some of the things that, you know, if people don't want to go down the sort of HRT or the medication route as a, you know, a health and well-being coach, what are some of the things that are, is working well for your clients? So let, let's just touch on the HRT thing first. So when we're going through perimenopause to postmenopause, our estrogen and progesterone levels are dropping. And that has a really, really big impact on our skin, everything. We have estrogen receptors all over the body. So that's why we have so many symptoms from headaches. Brain fog is a massive, massive one that we get, um, you know, to all the other symptoms that we've mentioned. So HRT replaces that. So HRT puts that estrogen back in the body so that we get that balance back. Some people choose not to take it. That's, that's absolutely fine. However, the studies are showing, and I'm not an advocate of pushing HRT, but it is, you know, it is proven to help us in that post-menopausal phase. So let's say we didn't go to the gym, we don't do any strength training, you know, we, we've got a bad, um, you know, a, not a good diet. We are very much at risk in that post-menopause stage for osteoporosis, insulin resistance and cardiovascular di disease. There are three main killers when we get into postmenopause, or our three main real diseases. So when we go down the health and wellness route, for me, it's about changing your habits so that you can really look after your heart, look after your bone density. You know, when you go to the gym and do strength training, how, how, how it is for women, you know, we, you know, looking after our muscle mass and our bone density. So for me, it's, not, it, it's about changing your habits so that your future health can be better as well. If you are also taking HRT, then that can actually help as well because you, you're keeping that balance of estrogen and progesterone in, in, in the body. And testosterone, by the way, as well. So some women take testosterone. Mm. So, you know, there's all different things that you can sort of do and change, you know, your, your eating habits, sleeping habits and exercise to help you further down the line. If, even if you've got listeners now who are in there you know, even their 30s, late 30s, they should be looking at their lifestyle and start to change because when we get to our 40s, it's really, it's really hard to change habits, isn't it, really? You know, to start going to the gym and being dedicated to it, it, it you know, it takes a lot of uh, effort to do that. And then you're asking somebody to do that on top of everything else that they've got going on in their lives. So it is changing habits, basically, to start with. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting, that whole gym piece. I've been going to the gym for years, but I've never really found the love for it that I have done in the past sort of 12, 14 months where it's become 
like who I am now. And I, I yeah. don't know if it's also part and parcel of the, you know, the amount of, you know, stats that are out there about osteoporosis and it is yeah. strong um, bones. And I think one of the things also that I had read was um, a lot of people put weight gain down to menopause but i did yeah. read or it was maybe on a reel or something like that but they were actually saying it's not down to that if you still continue to exercise and eat well the the weight gain is often down to the fact that you just slow down mm. because you're going through that or because you know you're, you're older and your lifestyle is changing so making that conscious effort as early as possible so it becomes part of your identity and we were talking about strength training. I know that's not for everyone, but like Pilates or something that's weighted or that is just going to give strong bones. Like I'm a huge advocate for it now. So yeah, long yeah. may it continue. Yeah. And and the thing and the thing is as well, I just lost my train of thought. Then like you just a minute ago. Um, is, that, is that the brain fog? <laughs> I put it down to menopause. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is going through that sort of when you when you and I spoke about this yesterday, it's like, as women going through it at this stage of our lives, at this age of our lives, we've got careers, we've got children maybe, we've got um, extended family, we've got social responsibilities, and then we've got menopause on top of that. So we've got all this stuff going on, and it's like identifying what bits are where in our lives and what we can sort of peel back and, and deal with. And then when you, you know, when you add in the gym and the, the, the nutrition to it, it's, it can get overwhelming. So it's just looking at your lifestyle and looking at little changes to see what you sort of can tweak and, and change. And not only that, you know, we've talked about estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, but we have insulin and cortisol, which are right on top. And if they're out of balance, then everything else below it is out of balance. So let's say we said we love the gym and we go, but I'm highly stressed at work and I've got a stressful relationship, for example. Then I go to the gym and train. I'm not doing myself any good. Ideally, I could be doing yoga, meditation, calming my internal system down to help me sort of lower my cortisol levels down. Because if your cortisol levels are high, your insulin levels are going to be high and that will that will put you weight on. So there's other factors behind that that would, you know, we could look at when we when we're doing a discussion about it. When you're discussing these kind of things, I think you know it's something that women go through, but in actual fact, it's something that as a family you go through because you come home, your partner, husband, kids, they're yeah. part of it. Um, how do you have discussions with, you know, family about this? Because it's important that they're part of it. Yeah, it's funny because the other day I had a client and basically she is going through menopause, uh, perimenopause. Her husband is 45, 49, sorry. He will be going through something himself because they go through something similar. They go through andropause. They lose their testosterone levels and, you know, they get depressed and they get all the same kind of well, symptoms. Very grumpy. Grumpy, yeah. Um, and then she's got two teenagers who are puberty, so she's got puberty and menopause oh <laughs> in the same household. So, you know, it's just about opening that conversation. It's like, if you know you're grumpy, it's saying to your partner, look, this is the reason why, you know, I'm, I'm just having a bit of a bad day. My hormones are out of whack. Just leave me be, you know, just, and you know, have that conversation. It is having about that conversation about what's going on in your life, because generally we just don't like, as women, we sort of, try and hide it because a we don't want to sort of we stick our head in the sand we don't want to sort of be there just yet and then you know we just sort of again we don't identify with it as being menopause we end identify it with it being life stress and then it just comes as an explosion in a relationship so it is really down to having that conversation let's just touch on the the men the men's what did you call it? Andropause. Andropause. Yeah, that's what they've that's what they've labelled it. The the industry. Yeah. Okay. So because men, like you know that that ter terminology was kind of like oh just a grumpy old man and it's like men seem to get grumpier. Um, yeah. So is that because they're going through the same thing? It can be um, because what happens with us is we peak at thirty in our thirties for with all our hormones and everything because it's our reproductive years. And then obviously, then it starts to come down, but it comes down and then it drops down you know, quite quickly. Whereas men, their testosterone comes up and it slowly goes down, but it goes down enough to, to affect them. So it can affect their mood swings. It can affect their anxiety. You know, they might, they might, you know, 
take all the all the pressures of the relationship on and not be able to deal with it their work pressure and everything so they do have they do get it yes 100 percent and and the way to treat that is the same way that women you know you're saying through diet and exercise and stuff like same that. and they might need a little bit of a boost of testosterone to to bring their energy levels back up you know because look at you know men are always like they've got high levels of testosterone so when that starts to go their muscle mass might start to deplete their energy levels might start to deplete and you know for a guy it's all about bravado not bravado but you know it's all about that male dominant kind of um, situation yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know once they start to lose that they they sometimes feel like lesser of a man maybe and and don't feel as good as you know like we when we start to lose our hair maybe or our skin starts to sag and we don't feel confident in ourselves anymore they they actually go through the same not as drastic as us i'm not putting them on the same level but they they do go through it and on the other side of it as well i'm not you know um even if they're okay they sort of go through it seeing us go go through it do you know what i mean they they sort of see us with all our symptoms but they don't understand what's going on so i have created a, a, a workshop called men take a pause so where i i literally just logically explain what's going in the female body and give them tips of how they can sort of navigate it and not not cause a um, world war three in the house <laughs> sort of scenario so how do you work with your clients because then i guess you could actually be with someone for a, a long period if they go through it or is it just getting them to understand what's going on how, how does your business model work so first of all i it's all about education and awareness um i work with individuals and i work with um, corporates as well doing it in there ah, okay. um, i do workshop events for like mums for example just explaining what menopause is just at, like we've explained today a bit and a bit more in depth about how your sleep is affected and why and going into the whys of it um, and then a one-on-one -on -one, we then go through the whole sort of nutritional exercise sleep routine seeing what's happening and where we can tweak it so yeah i can be with i have been with clients for a good year when i when i'm with them but it depends on the uptake you know it depends on what they want to change and how quickly they want to change things yeah. um because it, it, it fluctuates every day so you never know how it's going to affect you that's the thing yeah. just um on that note on sleep so we mentioned earlier like the night sweats and I was like that's just Dubai is it not living in here um what are some of the other challenges when it comes to sleep is it the inability to go to sleep or is it the inability to they keep or you keep waking up or mm -hmm. what's the sort of challenges so it, there's a few things one um is the production of melatonin in the brain is not as effective as it, it should be it doesn't produce enough and that could be down to us as well, because we're always on our laptops, we're always on our phones. So as soon as we start to look at our phone, the light from the phone stops the production of melatonin in the brain. So then it stops us going to sleep. So you'll see now on your laptops and your phones that there is the blue light. Switch that on and it doesn't, it doesn't penetrate as deep into the back of the eye where the melatonin starts to be produced. So there are things that we can do to stop or to help us. We work with a circadian rhythm. I don't know whether you've heard of that. So basically, our sleep pattern follows the 24-hour clock. So simple things like turning the lights out or down, should I say, um, around about 7 o'clock when our melatonin production st sort of starts so we can help that production before we go to bed. So they're the kind of things that we can sort of um, do ourselves. Exercise, meditation, yoga, breathing, making sure that we're calming the parasympathetic nervous system down and taking, you know, that self-care kind of um, hour just before bed, maybe lighting a candle, reading a book so we, we're calm and collective before we go to bed. Some women like to go and exercise before they go, you know, get, get home. Again, that's absolutely fine. But like I said earlier, if you're stressed already, your cortisol levels are already, already high, exercise increases your cortisol level so you're not going to sleep so that cortisol has an impact on your body so you know there are various things that we can do working with the circadian rhythm to to enhance our sleep pattern and you know if anybody wants the sleep management pr um, program i've got that i can send them it um, as well as eating you, you talked about hot flushes a lot of people get hot flushes at night time so working back to the circadian rhythm 
our body temperature goes up at around about seven, eight o'clock at night as well. So if we, we sit down to eat at seven, eight at night and we're eating heavy meals, and especially heavy protein, our body needs thermogenic, thermogenically, thermogenically produces that um, heat to break it down. So yeah. protein's thermogenic, okay? So the last thing we wanna do is be eating really heavy food at night. It doesn't say don't eat protein, but have lighter protein so that your body doesn't need to produce that heat, which we don't want if we're having hot sweats in the first place. Yeah, of course, of course. So what other tips would you have for anyone that's kind of going through this or suggestions that you might say, um, you know, do this or, you know, what might help them is there are other books out there. I remember having a client years ago and she really struggled through this whole journey. It really affected her in a big way. Is there support groups? What kind of things would you suggest? There's, there's loads now. Like, I mean, you mentioned a really great one. Balance is, is really, really good. And, you know, the, the one thing that women do sort of feel is that they're on their own with this. And, and you're not, you know, every woman is actually going to go through it at some point. And I think opening up that discussion so that if you're sat next to somebody, one of your friends, and you can talk about it, then that helps um, immensely. And the other thing is just to take a breath. It is a natural process. Don't be afraid of it. And then just like we were saying earlier, start with the symptom checkers. Be aware of what's going on in your body because there's only you will understand what's going on. You know, when I work with you, I can give you all the advice that you need, but I need that information from you. Are you sleeping well? Are you exercising? What are you eating? You need to know that so that you can sort of then put everything in place. And then we look at your diet, you know, a lot of diets and a lot of nutrition sort of sway towards vegetarian. So the Mediterranean or veg vegetarian diet, um, it seems to work wonders with people going through the menopause, women going through the menopause. So we, we sort of play around with nutrition. We don't take something out and not replace it. We always have to put nutrition in. Look at your meals. How, how big are your meals? Because our metabolism does slow down. So the, the amount of food that we need as we get older doesn't necessarily work anymore, but we need the quality of food, especially if we're training, for example. Yeah, yeah. so there's, there's loads of different tips that we can sort of go through. That's quite interesting though, actually, as you get older, you don't need as much food. And that mm -hmm. then can also account, I guess, for weight gain, but people also putting that down to, oh, well, it's menopause, but in actual yeah. fact, it's just what we were eating doesn't necessarily we don't need to yeah. eat the same now. I've been using, and I find it quite good because one of the things I've got much more aware about is um, how much protein. I didn't realize how little protein I actually ate until I started tracking it. Yeah. Um, so quite interesting points there in terms of working that out, but also not having it super late at night. So you yeah. know, you're breaking it down, it's, uh, it's much easier for it to digest. And I, th I think the other point, what I was trying to think of earlier, you mentioned um, sh it was um, the, the weight gain. So usually we gain, tend to gain weight around the middle here. Um, and it's generally a sign of insulin resistance. So cutting back on sugar, um, you know, and usually what women tend to say is, I used to be able to eat this, or I used to be able to drink that if they drink alcohol, for example. But it affects me so much more now you know even if i have two or three glasses of wine i still you know i get groggy and it my hangovers seem to last forever kind of scenario yeah. and that's because our body internally is changing and the way we process that 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 sugar and that intake our liver um reduces as we get older so the toxins it's not pushing those toxins out the body as effectively as it used to do for example so that your body when you when you sort of get these signs your body's telling you something so you've got to sort of change to, to adapt to it that's so interesting because i've heard that from a few people that are a little bit older and when we've been out and i've known them in the past and they're like i just my body doesn't take alcohol in the same way or i can only have a couple of glasses when they would be able to maybe drink a bottle or whatever and yeah. that is just a way of your body's way of being enable or the inability to be able to manage the sort of the, the the liver and the breakdown of it. Wow. Yeah. 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 And the bile production that we have doesn't, you know, people have reflex towards foods and stuff like that. So internally, there's a lot going on because of the estrogen and progesterone levels um, and your, your 
your, your, st your follicle stimulating hormones, your, your FSH and your LH as well, they've got a part to play in all of this. Mm. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot going on. Um, but it, you know, if, if I, if I had to sort of say one thing to your listeners is don't be afraid of it, you know, it is, I, I often say to people, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed going through it because it made me relearn about my body and it re made me relearn about how I needed to pull back on my exercise, introduce new foods. And I never used to eat cauliflower as much as I used to do now or lentils and beans and God knows what. And now it's part of my staple diet. You know, I love it. And it's just recreating those new menus or new meals and stuff and, and just embracing it really. And it's been all right. It's touch wood so far. You're in the right <laughs> profession there. But that was honestly on one of my Kindle I downloaded not a Kindle, my um what's the uh, the audio book. I downloaded Davina's book and I literally have done four or five chapters of so glad that we've had this chat and you've been able to give the other perspective as to yeah. you know it's not all bad we, we yeah. learn about our body and and just even putting those things into place now about exercising and nutrition and and being stronger so that we can thank our future self rather than yeah. being 50 or 60 and trying to find that habit it's better to try and find it now yeah. and continue yeah. to to get to, to move on so if anyone's listening that maybe wants to bring this into the company um, and educate their employees or maybe need some support themselves, how can they find you? Uh, so they can find me on Instagram at SharonJamesCoaching.com or they can drop me an email at hi uh, Sharon James Coaching. They can find me there. I have um, a Facebook group called Menopause Mastery Lounge where I throw loads of information in there as well. But, you know, as the they can help themselves by getting the Davina McCall book, going on balance. I'll always, you know, put lots of information out there for people to sort of get, be aware of it as well. But if they can contact me, that'd be great. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for giving up You're your welcome. time, sharing your knowledge, putting me and I'm sure many other listeners and those that are watching this on YouTube, um, put their mind at rest. Thanks yeah. so much, Sharon. It was, yeah, exactly. It was great to speak to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Kelly. Take care.